On this session, we're going to have a mix of vibrant individuals who are also going to come up on stage to share their insights. And the first that I'm going to invite on stage, who will be talking about the, about the missing piece to human evolution and global transformation. Please welcome author and speaker from the United States of America, Ms. Tara Love Perry. Please give her the biggest round of applause. Thank you. And ladies and gentlemen, along with Ms. Tara, I'd also like to invite Ms. Sumaya Hassan, the CEO of Azure Energy Limited of Kenya. Please give her the biggest round of applause. We have a lot of ladies on stage on this session. I'm very proud of that. <laughs> Thank you so much. And next, along with Ms. Sumaya, I'd also like to invite Ms. Farzana Yakub, the CEO of Center for African Asian Studies and former Minister of AJK. Please give Ms. Farzana the biggest round of applause. From lunch to the stage, ladies, so good to see you again. And now, ladies and gentlemen, I'd like to invite to the stage who's going to be talking about eSports. For those of you who are confused about eSports, ladies and gentlemen, it is a growing world and it is going to be participating on the next Olympics, I hear. Please welcome venture capitalist and investor of the USA and Asia, Mr. John Lee. Mr. John Lee, I'm guessing he's going to come up on stage soon. Well, as we wait for Mr. John Lee to come up on stage, Tara, I'm going to have you, yes, take over the stage right now and please present your presentation. Ladies and gentlemen, please give her the biggest round of applause. Thank you, thank you. Hello, beautiful people. How are you feeling? How are you feeling? Yes, are you enjoying? I've been noticing something. Everybody has welcomed you. Everybody has thanked you for being here. But there's one really important person who hasn't yet welcomed you and who hasn't thanked you for being here. Would you like to know who that person is? Yes or no? Really important person, most important person, VIP. Would you like to meet this person? Would everybody please stand up? This is an interactive piece, people. Everybody stand up. I feel like we need to raise the energy in this room. What do you think? Yeah? Can we have the music, please? Do we have the music? Standing, music down. Thank you so much. <sighs> Bring your arms out like this. Every single person in this room, there's someone you need to meet. Bring your arms out to the side, thank you. Everybody close your eyes. 
Nobody likes doing this and feeling like they're being watched, okay? So everybody in the room, let's make a deal. Everybody close their eyes. And you take your arms and you wrap them around yourself. No one's watching you, it's all good. Take a deep breath in. And I'm going to invite you to do something that's way out of your comfort zone. Because in order to grow, in order to go forward, we need to get out of our comfort zone, right? We need to do something different. So I'm going to invite you, with your eyes closed, to say out loud to yourself, not in your head, out loud, hello, me. Take a deep breath, breathe it in. <sighs> Let it sink in. And say, thank you, me, for being here. Right now, in this body, in this moment, right now. Deep breath in. Ah, oh, let it go. And say, well done, me, for being here. And some of you in your head are saying, despite everything. Yeah, despite everything. Well done, me, for being here right now. And see if you can do this. I love you, me. And I'm going to invite you to receive those words in. Take a deep breath. Let them sink into your body. Not just hovering around in the air, not knowing where to go. And bring your hands to yourself and see how it feels in your body when you say, I love you, me. <sighs> because each and every single one of us is here for a divine reason. In this room for a divine reason, with each other for a divine reason, but also because you are here in this present moment in your body on this planet right now, for a divine reason. Does anybody in this room agree with me? Are you here for a divine reason? Yes? Does anybody know why? Just look around the room for a moment. I know often we walk around with our masks on and being polite and not really showing our full selves, but every single person in this room, we have something in common. We are here because we want to make the world a better place, yes? 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 Do you believe, beautiful souls, that if there was more love in this world, it would be a better place for us to live? Yes or no? What about for our children? Could we do with a bit more love in this world? What do you think? Yes? Thank you. And where does the love begin? Everybody can take a seat. Thank you so much. Give yourselves a round of applause. Thank you so much for participating. That went a lot better than I thought it was going to. Okay, so why are you here? Why are you here? Not in this room, I mean in this body, in your life. Have you yet welcomed yourself into your life? So the reason I'm here today, and I actually come from the UK, there was a bit of a typo, but I'm from the UK. And I'm here because I believe that we are experiencing a paradigm shift on this planet right now. What do you think? Do you agree? Somebody yesterday, there was a gentleman up on stage, he was talking about paradigm shift in terms of technology, right? We're having huge paradigm shift in terms of the advancements, the technology, the communication, the systems, how we interact. But I also believe that there is something else simultaneously that's having a huge impact on every single one of us. And that is a paradigm shift in consciousness. Everybody take a deep breath. Now we know this. 
we find it a little bit hard to know how to navigate. Because whereas we can think about the technology and use our brains and use our systems and use all the tools that we have for that, when it comes to a shift or a paradigm shift in consciousness, what does that really mean? Do we have the tools for that? Do we understand it? What it means is to actually finally understand who we are. Who are you? And I don't just mean your personality. I don't mean your job title. I mean actually who you fundamentally are as a being, as a spirit, having a human experience right now. And for many millions and thousands of years, human beings as a species have not yet understood who they are. Which I think is kind of crazy. Right? And maybe that would explain why so many people are actually experiencing the symptoms and the stress and feeling like they're going crazy. Because there's something missing. There's something missing in the picture. There's something missing in this incredible new paradigm that we're all creating with this new technology and everything that we're building for this incredible future that we all want. And that thing that's missing, ladies and gentlemen, is ourselves. Did you put yourself into your own future? We are so busy trying to innovate, trying to serve others, trying to give. We're all givers in this room, am I right? Everybody in this room likes to give and serve, yes? Yes? It makes us feel good. We get a sense of purpose. We feel like we belong, we're contributing. Yay, it's wonderful. But again, there's somebody that doesn't get given to, we don't give back to ourselves. I mean really give. In the way that you give and serve others, do you give and serve yourself? Because if we're not putting ourselves in the picture, and we don't know who we are, and we're trying to create a future based on not knowing, We've got a problem, I think, right? Now I'm gonna explain a little bit more about this, but before I do, I better just tell you who I am <laughs> a little bit. Shall I tell you a story? And then I'm going to introduce you to some spiritual technology to complement our uh, digital technology. Digital technology married with spiritual technology, we might really have something. Okay, so before I introduce you to that, quickly tell you about me. So my name is Tara Love Perry. I live in Brighton, uh, near London, in England. And I am a self-love teacher, author, and a speaker. But I grew up, I was born into a kind of spiritual environment. I grew up with an enlightened master from India, northern India, in my life. I was very blessed. And I was constantly in the presence of this guru, in the presence of the satsang. You know what satsang is, right? You all know that. I listened to satsang growing up from a very, very early age. And this was in, in London, with a community of British people, you know, who were truth-seeking, looking for answers. And as I grew up, I remember distinctly being four years old. And my parents, they were devotees, beautiful devotees, like yourselves, just wanted to give and serve and love and give and serve and love. And they gave and they gave. And for us, having nothing was more spiritual. We had a very poor upbringing because if we had something for ourselves, it didn't feel spiritual. And so it was to give to others meant that somehow you were better. I don't know. That's just what happened. We were very poor. And when I was four years old, I distinctly remember looking at my mum and dad, knowing in my mind that they loved me, logically speaking. I knew that they loved me. They were loving, good people. But my problem was, and I don't think it's just my problem, I didn't feel loved. 
I felt like there was a huge gap between what I intuitively, instinctually knew to be an unconditional, divine kind of love, right? I was in the light. I was a little kid, super, super sensitive, very awake, as all of you were too. All children are born super sensitive. You see far more than grown-ups think that you see. You hear far more than anybody gives you credit for. You feel what's in the room. You can hear the words that aren't being said in the room. You empathize with other people, am I right? We got any empaths in the room? Anybody here feels other people's energy or feels energy very powerfully? Feels other people's emotions? Does anybody have that in the room? Very common. A lot of it is, is, is happening more and more. But as you were a child, this was your natural ability. All children are super soft like clay, ready to receive, ready to receive every imprint around them. You pick everything up and you take it in. And as a child, I felt like there was this huge gap between what wasn't really being said, what didn't feel like love to me. It's like, big smile, we love you. And I'm like... I can tell something else is happening, right? But no one's telling me. And I'm aware of this beautiful, divine, pure kind of love. And I just want to go back to that. It feels like this world isn't safe. I'm aware, even though I'm very small, that there's a lot of problems going on. I can feel it. And I can feel everybody's pain around me. And I can't tell the difference because I'm a child. Who's feeling what? Like, am I, f I don't know I'm feeling everybody else. I don't know that I'm able to empathize with all the pain that's in the world, all the suffering that's in the world, because I just feel it and I, just feel it and I don't know why. This happens to every single one of us in this room. Some of us are more aware of it than others. And that gave me this big problem growing up because I knew then at four years old, I just need there to be more love, or I do literally not want to exist in this world anymore. I don't know if anybody's relating to me here. You ever have that feeling? Thank you, sir. Thank you. I'm sure there's a lot more people that are, thank you, I'm a lot more people that are feeling it than would put their hand up in this room. You just have this feeling of overwhelm. It's all too big, it's all too much, there's too much pain. I can't deal with it all. I need to get out. I need to go back to a place that feels safe, that feels like love, that feels like home. And we talked about this yesterday. There are a lot of people checking themselves out of this life. Too many people. Disturbing amount of people, either because we're creating a war to get out, or we're taking our own lives to get out. It's too much. And we wonder why, because we've got all this amazing communication got all these amazing systems to help people because we're all trying to help everybody. We're designing this incredible future, but the more we design our incredible future, the more people are checking out. Do we understand that? Are people happy? Do people know who they are yet? It's a serious problem. So, take a deep breath, everybody. Can everyone feel the energy in this room right now? Quite tense, like, <gasps> not sure I want to feel. <laughs> Breathe, it's okay. So what happened was, I had a very um, interesting childhood. I grew up, I was actually suicidal a number of times in my life growing up. And something happened where I realized that my sensitivities, I could use them for a good purpose. And I started to do this thing called soul reading. Does anybody here know what a soul reader is? No one. Is that one person at the back? Thank you. Well, I'm not surprised you don't know what it is because I made it up. <laughs> I made up the term. It's my own label. It basically means that I have this ability to read people's souls. And the soul is a library of absolutely everything ever that's ever happened to your individual spirit, ever. This information is stored in your energetic field. This information of everything you've ever been ever is stored in your subconscious and unconscious mind. It's stored in your DNA, it's stored in your cellular memory. 
And I'm able to read all these different levels of energy. And actually, so could all of you if you just came to my class. We all have this ability to do it. It's like a muscle that we just haven't developed. And whilst I was doing this work, I realized it was quite useful, and I was seeing a lot of clients. And all kinds of different people were coming to me. Professional people, you know, working mothers, um, wealthy people, poor people, sick people, all these different people were coming. And over many, many hundreds and hundreds of readings, something started to become apparent to me that every single problem that people had, mental, emotional, physical, even spiritual problems, there seemed to be the same one underlying cause for everything. Some need that wasn't yet met. Some people think that the most powerful motivation in life is the need for power, the need for wealth, the need to succeed. But I'm going to tell you something, and this is something you already know, that underneath every other reason you can think of, right at the bottom, at the bottom, at the bottom, every single one of us has a need to be unconditionally loved. to be seen, truly seen, to be heard, truly heard, right? To be held in exactly the right way, touched in exactly the right way, spoken to in exactly the right way by the right person at the right time. And the lack of that when we were little mixed with this ability that we have as all children to absorb information around us. It's how we develop, it's how we literally form. We are informed by our environment, right? We're sucking up that information that's everybody else. And then we think it's us. Something's wrong with me, right? Something's wrong with me, I don't belong here, I'm not right enough, I'm not good enough. Something's wrong. This is deep, deep, deep down inside I'm talking now. And this feeling that I need to be absolutely unconditionally loved. Now, the interesting thing was, I realized I've got all these clients that I can't go out and unconditionally love every single person that's coming to me. One, I don't know if I'm that good at it. And two, that's a heck of a lot of people to go and love and then I'm, they're becoming, no, I'm becoming responsible for their healing, for their well-being, for their transformation. I'm like, uh, this is too big a job. I'm not responsible here. I can't deal with everybody's stuff. So what happened was I started getting information from my connection to that light, to that divine that I spoke about when I was four. And I started asking the question, so how? I need the know-how. I need the technology so I can help these people transform their own lives, heal themselves mentally, emotionally, physically, and spiritually, fill in those missing gaps, meet their need for unconditional love, and that they're the best person for the job. Do you understand what we're saying here? Take a deep breath. Have you ever thought of that before? If you think about yourself right now as a little kid, Everything that you learn to do to get good attention. Everything you started to enact your behavior that would get you love. You would be good. You would be giving. You would be kind. Or you would go the opposite way and rebel. Because maybe that would get you the attention. Maybe that would get you the love even though you didn't care. You know? If you're feisty. Yes. <laughs> And you think about, and if you really bring your attention within, this is the problem, right? We know instinctively and intuitively that this is actually true. It's true for every single one of us in this room. And it's actually true for every single person in the world. Because we have been taught conditional love. It comes with a price tag. It comes with a condition. You're loved if. And we want something more. We know that there's something more. We just don't know how to get it. And we're afraid. 
Because what it would mean if we turned our attention back to ourselves, what would we see? We don't know who we are, remember? We're so good. All our attention, all our life has been going out there, out there to other people, to connect with other people, to give, to serve, to love, to, to attend to. And to turn that around, all of that attention that you give out all day long, your whole life, to turn that around and plug it back into you, self-connectivity. We would be afraid of what we see, afraid to feel, afraid to really empathize and truly connect with who we are. Because there's a lot of beauty, but there's also a lot of fear. There's a lot of lack, a lot of empty gaps, a lot of empty holes, a lot of pain. Something else I also noticed when I was doing soul reading is that I could see people's kind of genetic lineage. I would be able to look at a person and see their mother, their grandmother, their great-grandmother, their great-great-grandmother, and all the way down the line. And the same with the father and the grandfather and the great-great-grandfather. And I could see that what each generation did not understand, was not able to bring back into harmony in their own lives, was genetically imprinted into the next generation. Like a baton that gets passed in a relay race. Where you say, well, this, is far, this is as far as I could take my self-awareness. This is as far as I could take my ability to connect with myself, to heal these wounds to truly be myself. And there was so much blockage, and it got passed down the line, generation after generation, just saying, I, I can't do this, next. And my understanding is that we are that generation, and our children even more so, are that generation that says, you know what, there was a lot of bad that happened in the past. There was a lot of suffering, there was a lot of ignorance, there was a lot of mistakes. And we're trying to change it. But what needs to happen is that we are that generation that are saying, OK, the baton stops here. I refuse to pass this on to my children. I don't want my children to suffer how I've suffered. I want to make this world a better place so they don't have to experience what I experienced and what my family experienced. Am I right? So we are these change agents. We are the ones who have to transform all this stuff of the past in order for us to actually go forward and have a new paradigm, a truly new paradigm, where we're not taking the past into the future. And in order to do that, do you want to know how to do that? It's very simple. In order to do that, we actually have to be right here, right now, present with ourselves. Deep breath. It's the hardest thing to do, right? We'd rather live in the past or live in the future. But if we want to genuinely not just make a hash up of the future like we've done of the past, we need to learn something. We need to wake up. We need to awaken and develop and uh, transform our consciousness to catch up with our technological developments so they don't run away with us, you know? <laughs> so we are advanced enough in our awareness to deal with it. So I created a technology. It's called Seven Steps to Transformational Self-Love. I've written a book. I have programs. I'd be more than happy to share this information with you some more. And I thank you so much for your time. Thank you for having me. That was possibly one of the most positive vibrations I have ever felt across the room. Tara, thank you so much for making this summit so alive. Thank you.